everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV down here with another new floor plan from Alliance in their Delta division. This is the new 292 rear living, and it's a floor plan that is not necessarily original in the industry, but uh, true to form in the, their normal way of doing things, they brought that Delta change to uh, a done-to-death kind of layout, and I think that they fixed a couple of the common problems that I've never personally liked in a dual opposing living slide like this. So this one right here, it kind of fits in that concept I sort of refer to as like a portable park model, where like you want to spend a long time at some place, but you also don't want to just be shackled down there. You want to be able to tow around. Like if you got a decent three quarter ton truck, you could jerk this thing all over the place. And what it's going to give you is that awesome big destination space with all of the windows in the world overlooking the campsite of the RV. So you're not only looking at the sweaty shirtless neighbor who never looks like you want a sweaty shirtless neighbor to look. Keep, in, keep, keep that in mind. Anyway. That's the, one, that's the downside of camping. Anyway, this thing um, has factory standard dual uh, air conditioner, which is great, but they're using a better kind of AC where you can run both of them on 30 amps. So if you're not sure where you're gonna park tonight and you're in some place that just has limited power, you can stay cool and comfortable. They are carpetless, they are ventless, and they went with a floor flush kitchen slide here, which I've heard a lot of people say is a make or break deal. So you don't have that annoying toe stub or kitchen where you have to like stress your lower back to lean forward to like use your kitchen stuff. And they moved the pantry out of the slide and put it over by the coffee bar. Now, a lot of big fifth wheels do that, but it's like everybody and their brother's just obsessed with throwing a pantry in the slide between the TV and your kitchen. And instead of doing that, it makes the whole RV look and feel huge and provides way more countertop space and serving space. I like it. Personally, I really like what they did here. It's not without a couple little hiccups and hangups, I think. I haven't closed it up yet. I think you're gonna lose the kitchen in road mode with the slides closed, but we're gonna dive into all that and more. If you appreciate how we get you those details, make sure you like our video and hit subscribe if you're new. And welcome to the RV Nerd Herd. Now I usually go about this, I'll start like right at the entry door, kind of the way you would first see it in person. But sometimes I look at an RV, I say, okay, how would a person actually using it? How would it look to them? And I think it might look a little bit more like this. I think you might be kind of hanging out on the rear sofa. You might be having a little bit of a chit chat, or you might just really be enjoying all of these windows over here on the campsite of the RV, because that's a major focal point of this trailer right here. Also worth noting, once again, it is carpetless and ventless all the way through, and you will see that the kitchen slide is also a floor flush slide. And the way that they did their slide flooring, they didn't put like a big piece of trim around it. They cleaned it up really nicely. It's borderline, gee, I, I sound like I had a, a, a problem there for a minute, but it's borderline, um, you know, imperceptible. I couldn't decide if I just wanted to say imperceptible or borderline and what came out of my mouth. Um, I, I don't know, it, it, was, it, it wasn't words, uh, <laughs> is what it wasn't, Any, anyway. Um, so all these windows open for max airflow. You're going to see they have blackout roller shades. Windows all the way up through the hallway into the bedroom. The door is the only window that doesn't have a shade of any kind, but it is prepped and ready if you are so inclined to do something like that. These are also a little bit taller inside. They have a six foot nine ceiling height. And along with all the windows and the, uh, uh, you know, carpetless nature things, it makes this rig look and feel huge. Now, again, speaking of the air conditioners, and I really want to drive this point home because I think it's one of the major points of a, uh, a Delta travel trailer. They have... Uh, just absolutely fantastic uh, air systems on this because they are standard dual air, but they're using um, a variety of air conditioners that run a few bucks more. And they um, they can you can operate both of them on 30 amp service, which is not exclusively the first time it's ever happened in the RV industry, but in this kind of class and segment is pretty much virtually unheard of. Uh, and uh, so like if you know, you're know you in a really, really hot place and you've got limited power source, or if you have a smaller generator, you can keep the RV cool. Now you're not gonna run both airs and like the microwave or a toaster or something like that. If you wanna do that, you're gonna wanna shut one of the air conditioners off. It doesn't have any kind of power management system to juggle that stuff for you, but I can give them a pass on that. The fact is they've created dual air on 30 amp and that is really really cool i really like that led accent like under the kitchen little toe kick line as well that is going to be really handy for seeing what you're doing you know like at night or something like that now over here obviously we've got our you know theater seat on what i like to call boardwalk and park place with the max l tapes viewing uh angle where you are staring straight at this jumbotron of a tv 
but it's the fact that they did the kitchen basically a little bit differently that allowed them to put a jumbotron of a TV in here, which is ideal for nearsighted folks like me. You know, I've got uh, my corrective contact lenses, but most manufacturers to the left of the microwave, they like to, the, to put a pantry in the slide. And it's not that it's without merit and there can be benefits to it, it can be very cool. But by not doing it, they were able to create one giant long, like one level countertop. You notice how there's not like a level shift in there like a lot of brands will do. And that created more space to put a bigger TV in here. So if I actually park myself over here at the theater seating, that's perfect. They didn't mount the TV all the way up against the ceiling, which they could have done because this is a little bit taller ceiling and they went with max height slides. Uh, so they could have mounted that TV up really high, which seems to be the annoying current trend of things. But instead, everything is just very simple and comfortable. And now, like a lot of alliances, they have the little hidden storage behind the, uh, the fireplace there, which I did finally remember to showcase. And I'm not the biggest fan of the power outlets on both sides of the sofa down here by the floor, but it's because those side stands are actually like little hidden storage trunks. So kind of keep an eye on those as we go through and, and dive through all the details. Now that little LED backlit kind of accent box up top, it might look really cute when you're decorating it. I don't love the fact that it's not really good functional storage space, but I do think the RV has enough storage otherwise. I don't mind going for a little bit of fashion at the sacrifice of a little bit of function. Uh, but I, I think overall they, they minimize that. They did go with no storage over top in the slide, but instead ju just went with maximized windows. And something I think is it, like, you don't really recognize, but I kind of tuned into it, how all the windows in the slide and uh, are the same height. Like if you look at this, all of the windows across the entire living room, whether it's in the slide or out of the slide are pretty much all at the same level. You don't have this like up, down, all around kind of mambo number five sort of thing happening uh, with your, I never thought, I didn't think I'd sneak a Lou Vega reference into my videos today, but hey, uh, here we are. Take a look at our theater seat. They are wall hugging, so you don't gotta wrestle the stupid things. They do have the thigh buster USB plug, but I guess it's better than nothing, but I don't know, I, I think a lot of people would struggle using that. You do have the um, the hide a bed down below. Um, now they went with a more of a, 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 a two and a half adult sized hide a bed to give you some nice big side stands, which again means big storage beside. There is storage behind that swing out TV, which can really crank around. Like you're standing in the kitchen, you can actually watch TV in this thing, which is kind of crazy. And you might notice how there's, there's room for pots and pans handles on both sides of the stove top. And right next to the refrigerator, right down at countertop level, might, you might've missed it, but there are some power outlets down there. So they are doing some really handy kitchen function things. And again, by moving that pantry over there into that corner next to the coffee bar, they've just offered maximized counter storage and prep space on this thing right here. Um, the, uh, I'm noticing the, the kitchen table is actually bracketed against the wall. So that is a no knee knocker, which big clumsy goofballs like me, uh, that is certainly nerd preferred. In the summertime or in the fall like this, when I'm recording a lot of RVs rapid fire, my legs, I, I'm just clumsy. My legs are constantly scarred and scabbed to, to pieces. Like it's just nonstop. And uh, anything that avoids that, I, I like it. I also really like how under the sink you have things like the little like wastebasket storage built right in. But it still has those Alliance features, like um, the, the little things you can't see. Like the fact that every single water fixture in this RV has its own individual shutoff valve. So like the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink. Every single one of these, whether it's a shower or anything, you can shut off individually. So let's just say, God forbid, something happens and you have a problem and you need to shut one of those off. Well, you can do that and not cripple your entire RV. Most RVs, if you have like a, a bathroom sink problem, you gotta stop using water in the entire camper. You have to ruin your trip. You don't have to do that here. Um, you also have some really nice kind of uh, storage space going on under this bathroom sink right here. You can see the triple pullout drawers down there. Not to mention, uh, you know, full Lipitor storage medicine cabinet above. And I, I'm really, I've been very vocal that I don't like open face storage, but considering it's narrow, if you roll towels up, it's, gonna work just fine although it is super crazy stupid deep 
Um, you could lose something back there if you're not paying attention. Uh, up top here, you are not going to scrape your scalp and lose more hair, which is something I already cannot afford to do because a little bit taller ceiling at six foot nine uh, means, you know, if you're a little over six foot like me, you can stand in there just fine. And I really like this down below, the soft clothes porcelain foot flush uh, toilet lid that they have. Um, little things like that. So like, you know, middle of the night, you got to sneak over. You got to use the bathroom. You don't have to, uh, you know, blam, accidentally slip and drop that thing and wake up your partner. Because in this small little enclosed box, oh my lord, that sound sounds like a gunshot going off. Now you can see the sliding privacy door here with the little holdback latch. I kind of wish it had a matching latch over here just in case you really happen to be folding laundry rather aggressively and you uh, don't want that door to slide open. I do think um, folks are uh, less inclined to fold laundry more aggressively when they do have a guest, um, but I don't know your life. I just know that I've met everybody and everybody goes camping and um, everybody folds laundry uh, their own way at their own time. Um, so we'll just kind of leave it at that. So funny story, when I talk about stuff like that, our HR department, for, for the protection and safety of our company, certainly, they have had talks with leadership about like, we get nervous about what Josh says on camera sometimes. And they're like, let him go. He's not hurting nothing. <laughs> so you saw that second air there uh, above the bed. And uh, you also have a true queen bed in here, but I want to dive you into the storage up here in the bedroom. Starting up top, that is just a big closet space with a couple dresser drawers below. Um, the under the bed storage is very simple and easy to access. But what I think is very cool, I have individual dresser drawers on both sides of the bed, but they also have this little flip top kind of hidden storage. So like you want to keep your favorite book or something there beside your bed or like a watch just kind of out of plain sight. Don't get me wrong. This thing ain't Fort Knox. It's not a fortress. If somebody wants to get into it, they're going to, but just an extra little thing just for a little bit of personal peace of mind is kind of nice. Something else that I noticed that I think is kind of cool. It's really neat just having a switch for the main ceiling lights here in the bedroom. And I also noticed they have four of these big, aggressive fifth wheel toy hauler level uh, heavy lumen lights going on in this thing. Holy crap, man. Call the Batman. That is some bright, bright stuff there. Now, you do have dual air conditioners. The bedroom air conditioner is stand alone. So you do have a separate air conditioner right here in the bedroom. I would recommend not turning one of those AC vents directly toward it, though, so that you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the air conditioner prematurely shutting itself off. One major Achilles heel on this one is that it's definitely a floor plan made for being there and not so much getting there. Because when the slides close, the living room, the kitchen is basically pinched off. However, this RV has fold down stable steps. If you can fold the stable steps down, they stick out further than this slide. So if you can fold the steps down and get to the bedroom and the bathroom, you can open this slide. But you have to. So... Mm. These are both rack and pinion slides, by the way, both the living room and the kitchen slides. So they're made to hold up to heavy weight. And just in case you're curious, I've had the air cranking in here. You might've heard it a little bit in the background, but it ain't that bad. Now, uh, all the big space on this one also means you're gonna need a bigger vehicle to haul it around. I would not really recommend a half ton for something like this. And I know a lot of places are gonna sell you this trailer. If you tell them you got a tow package half ton, they're gonna say, oh great, you can handle this all day, brother. I'm just kind of, eh, I'm not one of those. That doesn't feel right to me. Mo I mean, this thing's, I haven't checked the specs. I bet it's like 35 foot long, you know. You've got a long, strong, down to get the camping on kind of camper right here. And this thing, you're gonna need a hefty truck to be able to handle it because the longer the trailer, the more easily it can push around, especially a lighter duty vehicle. Um, <clears throat> I said duty. <laughs> uh, magnet holdbacks, slam latches, and this is a key-like system where uh, you don't have to have a whole bunch of different keys. You're gonna get two keys, two copies of one key, and they're gonna do everything you need in this RV. Now just giving you a look around this gigantic like 62 cubic foot front storage compartment. It is actually a mini drop frame, so like a miniature version of a fifth wheel uh, storage compartment. You've got a, a six foot picnic table included with these, which is awesome. And it stays up out of the way, so it doesn't eat up your cargo space. But over here, a couple really cool things they're doing. Um, oh, I like that motion light. Thank you very much, that was handy. So <clears throat> you see two buttons right there that say awning switches. Whether it's inside or outside, 
you can open your awnings up. And I tell you what, when you're sitting out here and you don't have to like go in and out of the RV or if the wind picks up or something like that, that little detail could keep you out of a repair shop. And I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of an awning getting ripped off the side of your RV by mother nature. I have not and I hope I never do, but this might be something that prevents that. You may also notice down here at the bottom, there's that blue and red sticker. It says spray port. Then on the other side of the RV, you see another one of those with a couple knobs above it. Well, those knobs will provide the hot, cold water mix for every outside sprayer on these. And I've not seen any other towable RV ever do that before. I thought that was a cool detail. And I believe there's actually a third one of those on the tail of the RV. Now, Alliance has always been really good about putting these little access panels in here. Like that's where your water pump, um, also your 40 amp charge controller, MPPT 40 amp charge controller in here. So by default, this has a 200 watt solar package, but if you want to, you can bump that up uh, because you've got a charge controller that could handle a little bit of expansion pretty comfortably. All of your um, actual gate valves and everything are in that enclosed forced air heated underbelly. The belly has radiant barrier layering and uh, you also have holding tank heat pads on every single one of your holding tanks. And something they're doing on every single Delta is a dual 45 gallon gray tank. So they're making sure that you really have some very respectable, uh, you know, water capacity on these, which is really handy. Not, you know, people think water capacity, they think, oh, that's for boondocking. No, I, I tell you what, a big gray water capacity is super useful when you're a park camper, especially if you don't happen to have on site sewer. The uh, cool thing about that, it means that you don't have to constantly, all the time, every time, you know, like every time you take a shower, hop outside and, and drain yourself. Like, you know, if you have to like haul the camper up to the, the, you know, drain spot at the front of the park or something like that, or, you know, it's Tuesday and the honey wagon doesn't come till Thursday. You don't got to sit there with like swamp water in your shower floor. <laughs> you don't got to worry about that here. Um, down below, we do have Goodyear Endurance Radials, which is awful handy. And they opted to go with Max Airflow uh, windows. Uh, let's talk a little about construction points. I think in my last Delta video, I kind of overlooked some of that. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, what uh, what I'm getting at here, your, your walls are what I call dual Asdell. So they're Asdell on the inside and outside layering. So it's composite walls. Your flooring is also all composite flooring. Um, where it is, you know, like all aluminum block foam and basically Asdell top bottom layering on that. So the walls and the floor are effectively waterproof. Now, what I didn't say is you never ever have to maintain your RV or, you know, anything like that. What I said is, God forbid, there's water intrusion. You've got a pretty good bones camper here that should be able to hold up to, uh, you know, brief exposure before you have long-term permanent damage. Your roof on this is about the only sort of stick built part of the structure because what they really found is they need um, some point on the structure of the RV to be able to like wiggle and express stress. And I have heard that same thing from so, so many manufacturers. So I, I guess I, you know, I really got to give it some decent credence right here. That's a 300 pound rated, like uh, towel drying extra wide ladder. So first of all, industry standard, ladders only have to be rated for 250 pounds. So I appreciate that they're bulking up on their structure. Secondly, being able to like hang a couple towels or something off it to dry off in the summertime, that's actually super, super useful. And uh, something that's easy to miss, unless I get you right down here in its face, I think it's actually back here on this one. Yes, okay, sewer hose caddy tubes so you don't gotta mix your black tank stuff with everything else. Now there's certainly no shortage of other builders making floor plans like this. And I would be curious to know, who do you think this best compares to? And, I, and I'll tell you, I, when I went through this, what I've actually been feeling from the Deltas, a lot of people have been saying, oh, they're a lot like a, uh, an Imagine, and I, and I can see that. But when I go through the different features and details, I actually kind of feel like they bump pretty hard into Ember Touring, but that's just me. Which is funny, because Ember Touring just came out with their version of this floor plan, which also isn't terrible. You know, it's just everybody has their own swing at it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a link in the video description. Well, a bunch of them. First of all, if you wanna see how much one of these runs and where we got one part, check that link there. If we have one in stock, it will be on our website with pricing clearly displayed. If we happen to be sold out, call our team. We'll get you some figures, no sweat. Um, I will also leave you links to other things that have a floor plan like this so that you can do some cross comparing. Maybe you like this and you wanna see who else builds it before you spend all your money. We can help you out with that too to make sure you're getting your second camper the first time. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Mm -hmm.